Hey there, I am here in Vancouver, British Columbia, in Stanley Park, in front of one of uh, Vancouver's most recognizable landmarks, the Lionsgate Bridge. Uh, the reason I'm here today, other than to just enjoy a walk on the seawall, is to uh, just look more closely at the shape of that bridge, and particularly the cables between those two big towers there. The Lionsgate Bridge is a kind of classic example of a suspension bridge where you have two big, huge, heavy cables running between those towers and then the bridge deck is supported with smaller cables hanging from it. Now once that's all put together and uh, constructed the shape that those cables make is a parabola and we can represent it with a quadratic function. We're gonna take some of the dimensions that we know for that bridge and uh, come up with an equation for that quadratic function and then use that to figure out any, uh, any distance we want anywhere on that bridge. We're gonna do that right now. All right, so to model this shape of this curve, this parabolic curve that the cables make uh, with a quadratic function, uh, we need to use some of these measurements. Now, these are just measurements that are readily available. And we have three things here. We have that the height of the towers is 111. We have that the distance between the two towers is 472. And we have that the height of the cables above the water, this distance in here is 67. So we're gonna use all three of those measurements. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is uh, we need to set up some axes, an x-axis and a y-axis. Now, I am going to choose them as, since I want uh, my heights to all be measured from the water up, I'm gonna call the surface of the water the x-axis. And I'm going to call one of the towers. This tower right here is going to be the y-axis. And then everything's going to be relative to this point right here. That's my zero, zero. This is my origin here. Zero, zero. I'll put a couple zeros in there. Now, to write this, we're going to write this thing in vertex form. We're going to label a few points on here. That point right there, the vertex, would be half of this distance, right? This distance is 472. So then out to the vertex here, this distance is gonna be half of that, which is 236. So this is 236, my vertex, and 67, because that point is 67 meters off the water. My vertex is 236, 67. Other points that I know, the only other point I know here is the top of the towers. This point is zero, X is zero, because it hasn't gone left or right, and 111 meters up there. And the top of the other tower then would be 472 and 111. So I'll label that as well, 472, 111. Now that is enough to get the shape of that thing. So I'll give myself a bit of space here. And then we're gonna write the function in vertex form here. So we need to know our parameters from this equation. We know two of them already because we know the vertex. So we know a x minus 236 squared plus 67. Then the only thing we have left here is to find the a value. Now there's several different ways to come up with that a value, but we're going to use uh, one of the simplest here when we have these big numbers and not really a grid to count on or anything, we are going to substitute a point in. If you have that function and all you're missing is one of the parameters, you can use an x and a y value that you know are on the curve. The key is you have to pick a point on the curve and use them for x and y and then you can solve for a. Now I could choose either point. I could choose that point or that point. It actually won't make a difference. I'm gonna choose that point because it makes it slightly simpler to work with where one of the numbers is zero. So we're gonna substitute in here 111 for y and zero for x. And everything else is gonna stay the same here. And then we can start solving for this a value here. So to isolate that, I am going to 
just write this as 236 squared. I am going to move the 67 over to the other side. So I'm going to have, if I subtract 67 from both sides, I have 44 there. And I'm going to write this thing up here so I have enough room. A times negative 236 squared. We'll get the calculator out for that. And 236 squared. 55,696, 696 times A equals 44. So I have A is 44 over 55,696. That's my A value. I could reduce it to lower terms. I could write it as a decimal. So if I do 44 divided by 55696. It gives it to me as a decimal. It actually gives it to me in scientific notation. So that is actually 0 0.00079 approximately. So this is approximately 0 0.00079. Or you could uh, reduce that to lowest terms. If you write this in lowest terms, I believe what you'll find is it is 11 over 13,924. All right, so that means your function that you have to represent this with is y equals, let's write the original fraction, 55696 five, six, x minus 236 squared plus 67. That function represents it, represents the shape of those cables if you choose the origin to be at the base of one of the towers. You could also go back up here because you could have done this exactly the same, uh, same thing, but put the axes right here through the bottom of the cables. If you had done that, you would have had all the same things here but you would have got your equation in the end to be y equals, you would have got this same thing, x squared, because this would have been zero and this would have been zero. There wouldn't have been a shift either way. Either one of those is fine, just depends on where you set up your axes. Now, the other part of what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna actually use it to calculate a, a value. If you wanna know a point if you want to know the height of the cables above the water, 90 meters from one of the towers, I can just take my function now, and uh, I'm going to use the one that I came up with first because it's actually easier to use for this, and substitute in my value, right? If I want to know the height at uh, 90 meters over here, all I have to do is put in x equals 90, and then I'll find that height there. That's what I'm looking for, the y value. I want the y value when x is 90. So if I put in... I'm going to do this one up here. I already have that function there. If I put in 90 there and then just work everything else out, minus 236, all of that squared, times 44, divide by 55, 696, and then add 67. That is going to give me my y value, my approximate height. So for this, I'm going to get that calculator out again. And let's see how fast we can do this. So the height at that point is roughly 83, 84 meters above the water. We'll call it 83.8. All right, so that is writing and using a quadratic function to model the shape of the cables of the landscape bridge.